God bless you. All right, guys, listen. We are absolutely thrilled to have you here. What a crowd. Uh, in our second hybrid conference, what do I mean by hybrid? Live, and then, of course, using the gift of technology throughout, literally throughout the world now. So I do have a number of shout outs in all those hosting events. We've got our friends in Illinois, uh, Jay and the team at Marytown. Next year, we're going to have Joliet on board. We've got St. John's and St. Cyril's in, in Michigan, Jim McCann in New York. We've got Minnesota, Virginia, Florida, California. Of course, we're all over Wisconsin. Dave Yonke and our friends out in Madison are there. Father John up in Plattsville is making it happen. And as you heard, and some of you may, that are just joining us may not know, we literally have expanded this out into Europe. We have a, uh, our, our good friends, my dad's from Ireland, so his motherland, uh, we have County Clare, Ireland joining us. So David, we're excited to have you join us. And then also we have a number of brothers that are not Catholic from other denominations that are joining us. So guys, I just wanna say welcome to all of you. It is really this brotherhood, this Christian brotherhood that we're forming. Overall, what we have is 120 parishes that continues to grow, 120 parishes participating, eight, eight states, and of course, one country, one uh, European country. So in that, and when you're engaged in this work, that right there literally is a minor miracle. And this all started with four guys coming together with this desire to make a difference. And as you can imagine, today just does not happen. It takes a tremendous amount of effort to do this. Thousands and thousands of collective hours have come together to put this experience together for you. So what I'd like to do is have a big thank you for the, uh, the Men of Christ Milwaukee team. We've got Jim Micklich, you heard his name. You've got Paul, uh, excuse me, Pat Masterson. We've got AJ Garcia, John Jensen, Brian Collins, Mike Nuzo, who's down. We have our brothers down in the southern part of the diocese. They have a whole uh, a college uh, participating down there. Uh, we've got uh, Paul Dodinsky, which you heard, all of our board members. Um, of course, our wonderful priests, our regional leaders. Uh, you heard Father John. Aren't we blessed to have a wonderful vocations director? Let's just give him a huge round of applause. <laughs> Father Luke, I mean, in Milwaukee, guys, we have more seminarians than we have places to house them. That just tells you the fruit of all the great work. It's so exciting. And of course, our deacons, there's a number of deacons that continue to come out of entering into this experience, so we continue to really partner with them. Archbishop Listecki has been a huge, huge supporter, and we love him and pray for him. And there's also a special group of guys that I want to recognize. These are the guys that have this sacrificial heart called true men of Christ that are willing to lay their time down and really enter into the experience. So all the guys that are there here, here today, and of course throughout the, the, the country, those guys that are hosting that help lead the, um, in setting these, uh, these events up, can you please stand? I really want to recognize them. All those guys stand up, look around, hopefully don't be shy. We've got Kim Dax back there and all the guys all over the place, please stand up and let's give them a big round of applause. We're grateful for all they do. <clears throat> It takes a tremendous amount of work, I'm telling you. So since there are so many new people, I thought it would be helpful if I just shared a little bit about who Men of Christ is. So who Men of Christ is? Who are we? We are a group of a Catholic laymen that have come together to make a difference in the world. And that difference is helping men become better men. What's our mission? Our mission is to glorify God so everything we do, the foundation of men of Christ, this apostolate is formed on Christ. So we wanna glorify God and we glorify him by empowering you to go out and live your faith boldly. That is something we really want you to understand, which leads into the vision. Our vision at Men of Christ has got three key components, to evangelize, to catechize, and to unify. And in that process, we see transformation of our culture. So when I'm talking about evangelize, that's this conference experience. Like, one of the things we don't want you to do is check this as a box. Oh, I did that. I don't need to come back. This is something that we do almost like an annual retreat that we do every year. And one of the things through this experience, what we want to do is get to a man's heart, right? So we can then get to his head and, and create this experience that allows you to encounter Christ sacramentally through the word of God and then through each other. And then develop this personal relationship. Our God is a God that's personal. We want you to have that and understand that. And then from evangelization, what we do is we migrate into catechetics, catechize. We want to catechize. What does that mean? We want to form you in your faith. 
That is so important, and we do that through dynamic men's groups. And my wife said this right before we got together, and I thought this was such a cool quote. She said, you need to learn to love it, love your faith, and to love it is to live it, and if you don't love it, you'll leave it. Here is something 100% you need to understand. You can't love what you don't know. And right now, if you look at what's going on in the, in the church, there's a lot of, let's be real, there's a lot of ignorance. If you understood the beauty of the Catholic faith, there's no way you would leave it. If you really believe that was Christ at, in the Eucharist, there's no way you would leave it, right? So that's one of the things that we need to do. We need to enter into the experience and learn. And we do this through dynamic men's group, this idea of building brotherhood, coming together. St. Thomas, uh, 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 Thomas Aquinas said this, true friendship can only be formed through guys that are striving to grow in virtue. And coming together in this iron sharpening iron is something that we really strive for. And then the third component is we want to unify. A house divided can't stand, right? The Bible says that. And this is something we want to do. We want to be a unifier for good. We want to unite fathers with families, and we want to connect our men with their sons, right, back to the parish. And then ultimately impact the society and make a difference there. And that's something so, so powerful. Now picture this. So we're just getting started, guys. This is the second one. There's going to be all kinds of hiccups. You're going to have all kinds of video problems. That's just normal and natural. Always look for the good. Picture this. 100,000 guys all over the world coming together. We're connected in all our spots, impacting millions and millions of families. That is where we're headed. And it's a big round of applause because that's super exciting. I'm right, very exciting. So just a couple thoughts, a few thoughts, I should say, before we roll into this, uh, I will call it half-day Lenten retreat. You know, that kind of has got that vibe. It's a great time for us to be here. First thought is to live out your vocation courageously. What are we thinking about? Step one, I, you know, as I was reflecting on that, is run towards what you fear. Run towards what you fear. You know, courage is being afraid. I say this to my boys all the time. Courage is being afraid and doing it anyways. Mark Twain had a great saying. He said, do the thing you fear, and the death of fear is ended, right? So that's something to understand. And, I, of course, I know you feel this way. There is a ton of fear. I feel it, right? You feel the stuff, even what's going on in the government, in our culture. We fear that. Here's the thing. The devil wants to keep us isolated. We want to bring it together. There's strength in numbers, and understand that. Father Roger Landry, who's a priest out in Boston, I was listening to one of his talks, and he said, you know, he gets asked this a lot. What's like the biggest crisis in the church? And a lot of people say crisis of faith. And he said this. He said, there's a crisis of courage. There's a crisis of courage. There is a softness and timidity before the crosses and challenges we face as Catholics. And I think that's something really bite into right, as men. I really believe he's talking to us on this. And, you know, when you think about this softness and timidity, what are we talking about? Effeminacy, right, which is counter to masculinity. We're not talking about effeminacy. We're talking this pursuit for pleasure and comfort while disdaining the work that is hard and arduous. That's what effeminacy is. And when we talk about masculinity, you know how you form your manhood? You form that through the crucible of suffering, the crucible of sacrifice, the crucible of willing to take on responsibility, to make commitments and keep those commitments. That's what it means to be a man, and that's what we're striving to do for our brothers here. And to grow in that masculine nature, we need to embrace the struggles in our lives. Brothers, I know many, many of you, I'm going to raise my hand, we have struggles. All of us have that. But if we can look, and this has been so huge for me, if I can look through that lens and see that struggle as an opportunity for growth, that changes everything. If I'm willing to embrace my cross every day, as Christ told us to do, it's amazing how things can happen. And it's interesting, the Navy SEALs have a great uh, a great saying. They have this mental trigger that they put in place uh, whenever they come up against adversity. So anytime they come up against adversity, you know what they say? Full benefit. Full benefit. How, and what does that mean? How do I get as much benefit out of this adversity as I possibly can? And they understand, we need to understand that we grow through our, our difficulties. And I also think we need to understand this. We're in a battle right now. Can I get an amen on that one? Do you, I mean, do you not feel that? 
I absolutely, I, I mean, guys, we should be jumping. I hope all those out there are jumping. We, our Christians are under attack. We got to understand it. And let, like, oh, that's some compar- conspiracy theory. It's not. It's real. And we've got to understand that and go forward. And this idea is we need to understand wars are won by tired soldiers. Wars are won by tired soldiers, right? So this battle to engage or not to engage in our faith, to engage or not to engage in the culture for good, to, to pursue pleasure versus pursuing what we should be as true men in growing in our masculinity and embracing the cross of our lives. Our Lord teaches us to be tough. Our Lord teaches us to be tough, and he is the man that we follow. And his church that he founded, the Catholic faith, is a masculine faith. And understand that it's a faith that is for men that are striving to grow in holiness. Not perfect men, I didn't say that. But men that are striving to grow in virtue, that are willing to enter into that crucible and grow as men. That makes just, it's exciting. And this adventure that we're on becomes really uh, uh, powerful. So two things I want you to think about. You heard this already from from Father. And I'm really going to recommend this for you today. We're under this banner of running towards what we're afraid of. A lot of guys are afraid of going to confession. That's it. Look at the confession as the, the sacrament of strength. Look look at confession as medicine of mercy. And do not allow the devil to keep you chained in the tyranny of sin. Okay? Christ does personally invite all of you to that wonderful sacrament and to take that weight off you. Understand that and please take that time to do that. That's one, two. And I'm talking about masculinity. Take two to three commitments. Make those commitments. Keep those commitments. What you say and what you do creates this wholeness within you. One of the things I highly recommend you do is take notes because your minds will be all over the place. And then, of course, share those notes with your family. That's number one. Number two, be the hero that your family needs. And I, I absolutely love this quote, right? Hard times don't make heroes. It's hard times that the hero within us is revealed. And what is the definition of a hero? A person that is admired for their, their, their courage and their noble qualities. And to become a hero, one of the things that we need to do is we need to look at the reality of the current situation, okay? We need to look at the reality of the current situation. And one of those realities of our situation is there is a famine of fatherhood that is starving our families and killing our culture. And I, we need to hear this, right? Fathers, by the way, all you young bucks that are here, I want you, fatherhood, and we're talking spiritual fatherhood, being a priest, or we're talking about being a temporal father, that is talking about moving into manhood and taking on responsibility. Fatherhood, heroic manhood, is under attack in our country. Okay? We've got to make sure we understand that. Why? Because the enemies of free societies know strong fathers bring order and peace into the family. And without that, chaos reigns. And what comes with chaos? Everything starts to destabilize. Now check these stats out. This is fascinating. Pew Research just came out. USA now is the number one country in the world by a factor of three in fatherlessness. There are more children that go to bed with no father in the home in this country than anywhere else in the entire world. That to me was just astounding. That, that study just came out. Children of fatherless homes are four times more likely to live in poverty and are at greater risk for drug and alcohol abuse. The most reliable indicator of violent crime in a community is the proportion of fatherless families. In 90% of school shooters come from fatherless homes. So why do I share that with you? I I share that with you to, to, to like lift you up, to tell you how important your role is as being a father. And here's the thing, this is like, there's so much data behind this. If the father stays in the faith, the children stay in the faith. And something to write down and really imprint into your brain. Strong fathers equal strong families. Strong families equal a strong society. And that's something to really give a lot of thought to today. And and a strong country with that. So what you do matters. So think about that. All right, that was number number two. Number three, aim up. 
aim up. Our children are hungry for purpose and meaning. Give it to them. Give it to them. What do I mean by that? Why were we created? To love God, to serve God, and to be with him in eternity, right? Give them that purpose. You know, um, the antidote to suffering is meaning and purpose in life. And the reason so many children are struggling right now is because the fathers aren't giving them that, that high ideal. Heaven is the kingdom of hope. And we are on, as I said at the beginning, we are on this great adventure, right, with a high destiny. And that destiny is heaven. So don't let what we are fighting against distract us from what we're fighting for, right? And what are we fighting for, men? We're fighting for our families. We're fighting for our, our, our church. And we're fighting for the soul of our country. And there is such a need right now for strong men. Randall Wallace, who's an author, director, <clears throat> he uh, did Braveheart, We Are Soldiers. And he was asked, he's, somebody, uh, asked, or they kept asking him, they said, why do you write so many war stories? And he said, I don't write war stories. I write love stories. I want to know what you love enough to lay your life down for. And that, to me, just moves my heart. Man, we're called to lay our lives down for our families, to forge that masculinity in that manhood, in the crucible of the cross. And if we do that, we will live a joy-filled life and ultimately uh, make it to heaven. So brothers, I am so excited about today. I'm so excited about what we have for you. Please continue to pray for us. Not only have you had sisters praying for you, you've had our men of Christ. We've been fasting and praying for you. So there's a tremendous amount of grace that's going to come down upon you guys here and then all of you out there. So I'm grateful. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. And yeah, clap. Give it. Yeah, I got high school buddies watching. I got to like, yeah, we got to hear some energy, right?